The program to develop a sixth-generation fighter has become one of the main guidelines for the United States, designed to predetermine the tactics of modern warfare. Its concept is based on synthesizing lessons learned from past conflicts, anticipating emerging threats, and regularly striving for innovation. In this video, we'll try our best to tell you as much as possible about what is currently known about next-generation air dominance. In 2017, the Chinese Army acquired a new toy, the Chengdu J-20 Mighty Dragon Stealth Fighter. As the world's first stealth aircraft developed outside the United States, its arrival rightly alarmed those who called it the end of the American monopoly on stealth technology. But while China has struggled to catch up with the capabilities of the F-22, the United States was not just sitting idly by. Since 2013, it has been actively working on one of the military's most ambitious aviation programs, Next Generation Air Dominance, also known as simply NGAD. Also, in 2013, DARPA Director Arati Prabhakar said that the U.S. had begun studying an air dominance initiative. For millions of aviation enthusiasts around the world, this sounded like the beginning of the countdown to something cool. After all, the new aircraft was supposed to receive not only the most powerful engines, but also the best sensors, artificial intelligence integrated into everything that happens in and around the cockpit, as well as a swarm of manual drones playing the role of loyal wingmen. By 2016, representatives of the U.S. Air Force joined DARPA research, rolling out the Air Superiority 2030 plan. In it, they noted the need for a family of systems, but its central part was the fighter, the PCA, or Penetrating Counter Air. Two years later, Air Superiority 2030 acquired a more menacing, but already familiar name, NGAD, and work on the program began to move at an accelerated pace. The fifth generation's capabilities are air-to-air, -air, battlefield survivability in the anticipated anti-access slash area denial environment, ground support slash attack required improvements, and adaptation to future threats. The initial focus on the role of air superiority moved away from the close-range air combat rarely seen in modern conflicts, and instead expanded to include ground support, cyber warfare, and even space warfare. At the same time, the potential for using Beyond Visual Range BVR, and air-to-air -air missile capability remains important for the military. Only now, they have added flexibility to perform both manned and fully unmanned missions, with the ability to integrate swarming drones. When the American sixth-generation fighter was just beginning to enter the concept stage, DARPA considered combining the efforts of specialists from the U.S. Air Force and Navy. However, said branches of the military were soon recommended to develop their fighters separately. Rumor has it that this is how DARPA management decided to kill two birds with one stone, to first stir up friendly competition between the services and get two excellent new generation devices instead of one. Thus, the Air Force began developing the NGAD, and the Navy plunged headlong into its own FAXX program. Even with multiple hypersonic and missile programs underway, stealth remains a key factor in the future success of the U.S. Air Force. Although it's still difficult to say how realistic it will be to make the sixth generation even more stealthy, since even the F-22 Raptor was practically invisible on enemy radars, not to mention the later F-35 Lightning II. According to experts, the F-22 has some of the most impressive stealth characteristics. Its radar return is 0.0001 square meters, resembling a small marble on an enemy radar. The only thing that really lets the Raptor down is the cost of $350 million plus. Therefore, the first priority of NGAD specialists is to ensure that the sixth generation receives the best technology available without emptying the pockets of American taxpayers. At the same time, the estimated additional costs of the U.S. Air Force for the NGAD program from fiscal years 2024 to 2027 will be more than $11.7 billion. The price of one futuristic fighter, according to a statement by the Secretary of the Air Force, Frank Kendall, will be multiple hundreds of millions. But for now, we'd suggest putting money issues aside and moving on to the possible future characteristics of this aircraft. Modern fighter engines operate best at a single point in the flight envelope, so the sixth generation can acquire a variable cycle, 
thereby ensuring maximum efficiency at any speed and altitude. This also ensures improved range, faster acceleration, and greater subsonic cruise efficiency. The engines will be configured to act as turbojet engines at supersonic speeds, while operating as high-bypass turbofan engines for travel at lower speeds. Responsible for this unique capability are teams from General Electric with their XA100 engine and Pratt & Whitney with their XA101, working on the Adaptive Engine Transition Program AETP, under the auspices of the US Air Force. However, they tend to integrate it not only into ng 80 fighters, but also into the existing F-35 fleet. The F-22, for example, is well known for its super cruise capability, which was one of the core requirements of the Advanced Tactical Fighter ATF program, under which it was developed. But it's during super cruise that the Raptor burns a lot of fuel, so this is often reduced to short tactical bursts within its normal mission profile. What if super cruise could be achieved for long periods as a way to speed up the time it takes to transit to and from its intended station, but without the huge fuel consumption? Sounds like another challenge for the team that's currently developing NGAD. The appearance of the fighter will definitely move away from the established canons of the genre and will most likely receive the most streamlined design with an elongated mixed fuselage and a wing configuration in which there are no traditional horizontal and vertical stabilizers. This unprecedented tailless configuration would largely be due to the effort to maximize survivability via low observability across a broad radio frequency range above raw maneuverability, but it should significantly lend itself to aerodynamic efficiency. In terms of fuselage materials, the emphasis will almost certainly be on advanced stealth coatings to help conceal the aircraft from infrared detection and minimize the heat emanating from it, joining forces with the advanced thermal management systems integrated into the NGAD. In addition, engineers will have to make sure that even at high speeds the inconspicuous coating is not damaged and does not require lengthy maintenance after each working fighter flight. Another important aspect for the NGAD team will be the operating altitude of their future vehicle. After all, the same F-22 flying at more than 60,000 feet is bordering on requiring full pressure suits for the pilots, and missiles, especially air-to-air -air missiles, launched at 60,000 feet can fly much further than those launched 20,000 feet below. Considering the threat environment in which NGAD will operate, including space and so-called spectrum warfare, the following becomes obvious. The higher the altitude, the greater the versatility of the device. Let's also not forget the difference in line of sight provided by the fighter's sensors and communication systems. After all, at an altitude of 40,000 feet, its indicator is about 245 miles and at a level of 60,000 feet, this figure already reaches more than 300 miles, which is an important strategic advantage, especially when you have to make your way through a dense enemy air defense network. We also haven't forgotten that the NGAD fighter needs to ensure constant data exchange with Collaborative Combat Aircraft CCA, as well as other US Air Force and Navy aircraft for which the NGAD serves as both a quarterback and ammunition. So every extra mile of communication with other friendly vehicles and systems increases the survivability of the future fighter and forms a larger area in which NGAD can operate without the need for beyond line of sight repeaters like satellites. That is, for example, an NGAD at 60,000 feet will be able to receive data from a high flying communications mode operating at an altitude of 80,000 feet or remaining more than 750 miles away. The same drones, connected according to the principle of daisy chaining, can also reach much greater distances for data exchange without relying on satellite communications or high-flying gateways. So, we figured out the eyes part of the sixth generation, but what about its fangs? Or, simply put, its weapons? NGAD will most likely have at its disposal not only the traditional missiles available to the rest of the fighter fleet, including the F-22, F-35, but also the latest AIM-260A Joint Advanced Tactical Missile JATM, being developed in the bowels of Lockheed Martin, and these will be complemented by Long Range Engagement Weapon LREW, 
which Raytheon specialists are already working on. In parallel with the development of air-to-air -air missiles, senior Pentagon officials have been promoting air-breathing hypersonic systems as weapons of the future for more than 10 years. So these developments are likely to take a key spot in the weapon space of the future NGAD fighter fleet. And then there's the weaponized lasers. Yes, you heard right. After all, the US Air Force is already testing lasers that generate from 100 to 150 kilowatts of focus power as part of the creation of weapon systems from Lockheed Martin called Laser Advancements for Next Generation Compact Environments or LANTs, as well as the Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator Shield, which is a joint development of Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Lockheed. It's not yet set in stone that by the early 2030s we'll be seeing fighters firing laser beams, like in Star Wars, but the use of these weapons to protect NGADs from approaching enemy missiles, blinding and frying their homing heads, is quite possible. Given Northrop Grumman's decision to withdraw from the battle to create NGAD in 2023, Boeing and Lockheed Martin will apparently compete for it. At stake is a large contract for 200 of the latest fighters, so the competition is serious. Moreover, according to Assistant Secretary of the Air Force Will Roper, a full-scale prototype of the NGAD fighter was already launched back in 2020. What do you think? Will the US Air Force be able to show us a new generation of fighters as early as 2030? Share your opinion in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.